Hey there, this is Dr. Rambody. Uh, so we're here we're going to take a look at Project 6. Now, actually a couple of people uh, noticed that I didn't get this up on Tuesday. Um, there's a reason for that. And the reason was that I, uh, I was doing this. And this was uh, installing a, uh, a hearth at my house. That's marble hearth, about 200 pounds. I spent yesterday doing that. That's why I am delinquent on this. So let's take a look at the uh, Project 6. Uh, three parts. And again, this is to try and make your life a little bit easier. Uh, so you can do this, break it down into uh, pieces. Uh, and the first one is to draw a plot. And the, the basic idea here is that if you can create two lists, then you can plot it really easily. And so you have, so as, as it says here, uh, you need to make a list of X values and a list of Y values. That is the first thing to do. Forget about the rest of the stuff. Read the file, print out the values to start with, and then the X values come out of this column and the Y values come out of that column. So when you're done, your X values will look like 1880, 1881, 1882, and so on, dot, dot, dot. And then the Y values will be a negative 20, and then whatever all those other values are. And once you create the X and the Y, then you can call this plot function. But so what you want to think about is, I want to read the data file. Okay, so I've got a, got a data file. First thing you do is you read the data file, you print out all the lines in it. All right, now you know, you've, you've got that going, step one. Then the next thing to do is, try to collect all of the things in the first column into a list. The append is your friend here. So you take each value and append it onto your list and then take a, do the X's first. See if you get 1880, 1881, etc. And then once you got that, so that's, that's an X dot append of, of the particular value. And they got that working, all right. Now create the Y list. Remember, we haven't done any graphing or anything yet. And then you can go on and do the, uh, do the rest of it. So, so it kind of looks like, uh, like this. When you, act, when you, when you get this working, you should have a, uh, and, and notice I've got uh, variable Explorer on here. Uh, see, I've created a list. 1880, 1881, 1882, and so on. And then the temperature values, minus 20, minus 11, minus 10, and so on. I could, first thing I did is I created those two lists. Then, well, once you've got that done, then you can start thinking about doing some other things. So once I've created them, there's my X list, there's my Y list, fine. Uh, if I want to test it in the shell, I can import the PyLab and then it's just PyLab.plot of my X and my Y. And there you go, there's a graph. This, by the way, is a graph of temperatures on, on, the, uh, on the Earth. How about that? Look at that. We have... Um, uh, it looks to me like that's increasing. Some people complain that it's not a perfectly straight line, but uh, uh, if you ask me, that's increasing. Where's the controversy? All right, so uh, once you've got that working, and notice how you know all I did was pylab.plat. Well, um, you know, you actually have a function uh, to call called what is it draw graph if I remember correctly uh, and you send it the X and the Y and it goes and draws the same graph but it's got labels on it now 
So that's part A. But notice, I started out, first thing I'd do, just print out the values. Read the file, print the values. Okay, now you got that. Now create the X list. Oh, okay, now create the Y list. And then you can think about plotting it. That's what there is to uh, part A. How about part B? Let's take a look at that. Um, so our part B says that we're going to uh, we're going to read this. We're going to read the 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 a different file, and this file has um, all the values for uh, the year. Uh, and the the one that we had for A actually uh, uh, took the average of of each uh, each year. So so basically, you know, you have a choice. You can um, uh, you you can input some uh, partial values. And we've done that before, so let's forget about it for now. Uh, if you do all, then it, it does all of them. And, and in fact, it turns out that what Part B does is it generates, the, with all, it generates the file that gets used by Part A. That's how we made the file for, for Part A, is we, uh, we, we did uh, Part B with the all selected. So. So, you, so that's a good place to start because you can now compare that to the input file for part A. And each, each uh, row here has uh, 12 temperatures. So you, you, you find the sum of those and divide by 12 and that's the, the average for that year. Uh, sim simple thing to do. And now if we're printing all of them, we're gonna print out the year and the average and it talks about we have to round them off and other other stuff like that that we can do uh, later on that's the basic idea just go through every line take the year take the uh, a sum and write it to a file and, and of course the first thing to do is to uh, print it and then once we see we've got the right values we can then go and write them into a file so let's take a look at, at how this might go. So now, now, now watch, the, uh, watch the process here. Uh, uh, I'm going to create a file just to, I'm going to get rid of those comments just to give us room here. And uh, watch how I, I go through this. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'll show you data full dot text and the very first thing I do and you should have done this on the the the, uh, um, the part a uh, is first of all make sure you can read the read the file all right you know and this makes sure we've got it oops I gotta, I gotta save it uh, I'll call it video B all right now let's run this guy Right. And so there it is. I can, I'm, I'm able to uh, uh, print all the values there. Uh, and we're going to have to watch out for the fact that there is, if we go back to the beginning here, there is a, uh, there is, is a header file. And guess what? I don't want to deal with those right now. So read line is a uh, nice way to print this out without that date. Uh, without that header file, I, I can scroll back and see that, yep, we, this time we started just with 1880. Oh, that's nice. Now, we're in the world of lists. I want to be able to look at individual numbers. So let's make a list out of this, and we take our line. And I like to strip the carriage return off it. You don't have to do that here, cause, uh, but it's a good habit to get into because most of the time you don't want it. Uh, and then we split. This is uh, the, you know, the values are separated by spaces. And so now let's print the line list. Notice how I make uh, I I do a line and then I check it. Great. Oh, look at all those quotes there. I'm going to want to add these things up. Let's make numbers out of this. How can I do that? Well, list comprehension is something I like. We want to make integers out of each value for those values that are in my uh, my list. Okay, so what will this do? This goes through the line list one character at a time, naming each one, and those are uh, 
you know, we're going through each item at a time. Each one of those is, uh, is, is one of these values here. And, and I take those and I each one, I make it into an integer. And then notice the square brackets at the beginning and the end. That makes it into a list. Oh, so notice now everything is in characters. Again, I've changed one line and we run it again. Now we've gotten rid of the uh, quotes. Now I'm dealing with numbers. Uh, all right, so now that I've got a bunch of numbers. What do I want to do? I want to find the total of all these guys. Those are the values. The first one is the year. So uh, what am I doing there? So I'm finding a total out. And, and what is it? I'm adding up my line list. And oops. And I want to take a slice from one to the end. And so let's let's now print total and the line list. Right. And now I can check. There's my total. You can use a calculator. Does that actually come out to be what I added up there? But I want the average. Well, there's 12 months in every one of those. So let's add the average in here. And so now I have, uh, I have an average, and the instructions say, oh, we don't want to do that, uh, so I want to round it. Um, let's see, number of digits. Okay, I think we said we have to round it to the number of, of uh, digits. That looks a lot better. It turns out we actually want ints. I'll let you deal with that. Uh, and so what do I want to do here? Well, I want to get the year out of this, too. Where is the year? Oh, the year is item zero, right? So let's add that into my print. Notice I keep doing, making a little change and test it out. And then finally, what things am I printing are just the average in the year. So let's get rid of the total and let's get rid of the whole list. I can, you know, up until now, I can get out my calculator and see how I'm doing here. Ah, that's better. The years and the numbers. Uh, whoops, we actually want to have them in the other order uh, to be able to print this out. All right, and so now I have something that should look like the original file. Now you still have to do some formatting and you got to put titles on the top. But notice how I went through this one step at a time. Every time I did a step, I added into here. And look at all the stuff that I don't have in here. I don't have... Uh, I, you know, there's all sorts of things that I have left out of this. This whole number three about selecting parts of stuff. All right, I haven't even thought about that yet. Guess what? Now that I got the rest of it done, I can work on that. All right, um, and then you know, the, and then we've got this stuff. Oh, okay, so I've got these averages. I got to figure that out. And uh, you know, okay, so I can I can go through. And uh, actually, I think number four is the best thing to uh, you know get that working right, and then get it printing, get it formatted right. Okay, get that formatted. Notice I still haven't written it to a file yet. That's another little change to do, All right? And then finally, I have to do some error checking. Okay, I can do some error checking, but I've got the basic part of this working. Keep adding these on one at a time to build your uh, uh, total project. Few lines, test. Few lines, test. Few lines, test. Watch how I did that. And if you ever have trouble trying to figure out, you know, okay, so how, what's the piece that I might do? What order do I do things in? Hey, that's a great topic for uh, Piazza or to get uh, help in the help room. And, and you know, even talking, uh, you know, I mean, you know, that doesn't have to be a private uh, uh, discussion. Part C is a little bit different in that we want to now find the N warmest months. Okay. And, and, and how are we going to do that? Right. So we're, we're finding the N warmest months and we're starting with the original data file. So I'll actually use a lot of, of Part B. Just copy and paste it in here. Uh, the you know how because because that gives us the values for each month uh, 
So, uh, so now what we're doing though is we're looking for not for the years, but we want to find the end and warmest months. Okay, well, actually, forget about end to start with. Let's find, let's take all the months and put them in order. What does that mean? That means first make a list of all the month values. And then, so step one is make a list of all the months. Read the, read the, read the data in and make a list of all the months. Okay. Um, but what do I want to have in that, that list? Well, I can see down here, I have year, I have month, I have value. So let's make a tuple out of that of collect the year and the month and the value and take each one of those tuples and put it into a list. Do all of them. You know, we'll start out with 1880, January, and whatever that value was, minus 20. Right? And then 1881, February, I mean 1880, February, and that was like minus 11 or something. I forget what the numbers were, and so on. All right? Make that list. Okay. Uh, see if you can create that list. That's the first thing to do. But, it, but the second thing we want to do, because we want the warmest ones, is we're going to want to sort it. Well, if I sort a list, a list will always be sorted on whatever the first values are. And here, the first values in each tuple is, is a year. Ah, we don't want to do that. So when I create my tuples, rather than doing it in that order, put the uh, value first. Now, when I sort, it will be the temperature for that month that will be first, and that's the order that it will be sorted with. So, first create a list, then sort the list. You may want to use, uh, you know, you have two choices. You can you have sort and you have sorted. There isn't a right one with uh, with that, uh, with in, in this case, which whichever one seems to work for you. Uh, but then get it sorted. Now you can look at once you've got it sorted, you know, and check that it's correct. Uh, you know, notice that we're doing this in steps. We create the list, then we sort the list, and now how do I get the first n or whatever? Slice. Slice is your friend here. Uh, now, one thing that you might notice is that uh, by default it goes from lowest to highest, and you want you might want to go highest to lowest. There is an option on the sort and the sorted called reverse. Uh, and you can set that to true and that will then change the order. You may want to do it that way. Uh, it all sort of depends on how you want to think about it. Create the list, sort the list, slice the list. That's the basic uh, you know, pieces to do and you can do them a little at a time. Okay? And in fact, I, you know, it says, oh, you got a prompt for the number of months. I would start out and just say, uh, you know, n equals five or something, you know, just so I don't have to prompt. What well, keep it simple, and then get that working, and then you can prompt for it, and and then slice it, and and uh, and so on. And then at the very end, go through and figure out uh, the kinds of things that can go wrong, uh, and and you know, put your put in your error checking. Oh, you know, I get the file. What if the file's not there? Oh, we put in an N. What if a negative number gets put in? And so on. You can go through pretty much to do this is, is you want to find ways, take the, the ways, ah, oh, suppose the TA tried to break my program. What might they do? That's the uh, attitude that you want to take. All right, that should be enough. Good luck with this.